we have just finished the 23rd summer transfer window of the youth academy challenge save and i have sold Bineki to Werder Brennan for 4.9 million pounds could i have gotten more for him potentially but 4.9 million pounds for him and i think he wanted to leave at the time makes sense in my mind he's not going to get much better he's not going to get much better Yes, he's a lean player for our division, but he's a two-star player for our team. So as far as I'm concerned, we could afford to let him go. We've got plenty of players coming through that need the first team football that he would be blocking if he was still at the club. So we've made some sales. We've got 4.9 million pounds for this player at least. We've also sold Philippe to Kokovia. Our backup goalkeeper is now their first choice goalkeeper. He's also played in the Champions League. Didn't have the best of times. He conceded four goals in that competition. But at least he's been playing in the Champions League. We sold him for £2.4 million. He's been there before. There are fears for others, yes. But he's been there before. They know him. He knows them. It made sense in my mind to let him go. And he wanted to go. So as far as I'm concerned, he was a backup that we didn't really need anymore. And he wasn't going to get him much better. So the fact he's now gone to one of our rivals is good for his development. Good for him. Good for the team. And good for the country. And good for the nation of Poland. Especially if they're able to do well in the European competitions this year. Because he's now there. But who knows. We've also made a few more sales. A few more loans out. But nothing really significant happened in the end. And I think that despite the thing we are going to be okay. We did make up a bit of money from some players going out on loan. We made £450,000 for Samodo going out on loan. He wants to leave us. He's got a transfer of £6.5 million. We actually had some scenes offering to pay that money. But he went to Montpellier where the optional future fee is £3.7 million. With additional fees which could take the fee up to £7 million. If they were to sign him for £3.7 million. So I think we can get that deal over the line. And... No matter what happens, I am definitely going to sell Mihas Moda next year because of the fact he's made such a point to say, I want to go, let me go. And I just thought to myself, you're not really one of the best players at the club anymore. You can go. I don't mind letting you go at this point in time. We gained £550,000 for letting this guy go out on loan to Lech Poznan. So again, good money here. He was out on loan at Reading last year. And now he's back in our country and has got a goal in the system already. So we are filling up this nation with good players, good Polish players. And I'm hoping that despite the fact they're good enough to take us on, we're not going to be missing out on this and we're not going to be made to pay for letting these players go out on loan throughout our country. Especially when I know this guy is a lean player for the division, but he hates big matches. So definitely could be dangerous, but I'm hoping that because they're playing in our country, that these bigger teams can get into European competitions and then do well. Lech Poznan are good enough to do it. They just haven't done it. And last year, they failed to get into Europe at all, which was very disappointing. I think I need them to be in Europe. I really do. But now, let's go over the results we've had since we last met. The first game we had was against Jagiellonia. They had two shots on target and on goal and scored with both of them. But we won 3-2. So we got another Super Popolski trophy to our cabinet. It's now 8 we've got. And I'm hoping that despite slipping up a little bit, we're not going to be made to worry too much. Novak didn't have the best of games, but neither did Kowalski. So, and neither did David Davids, to be fair. But we've got players who could do well. And I'm hoping that we can do good, good things this year. This is also the last time... That Binnicki played for us, I believe, because he got an assist as well. And might be the best contribution he ever did for his last ever game. But what can you do? The first game we had was against Kielkaz Yasembia, and we beat them 3 0. Though it took us a bit longer than I wanted to get the opening goals. But we got the opening goals, we got the opening win. And as far as I'm concerned, a great opening to the season for us once again. We then took up Papa Scythia and beat them 4 1. Novak. I took off and substituted in the middle of the game, in the 63rd minute of the game for Romario, because he conceded the goal and it was down to him. So Novak has not played since this game. But am I harsh to have made the decision to take off my goalkeeper 60 minutes into a game and then replace him with another goalkeeper? I don't think I am harsh, but if I am, let me know. 
I just got frustrated with the mistake he made and decided, you know what? Off you come. You don't deserve to be on the pitch anymore. And there you go. Romario has now become my first choice goalkeeper as a result of Novak having two poor games in the first three games of the season. We then took on Corny Pogovicia and beat them 6 0 in our first time meeting them in the league. And I just felt sorry for them, honestly. David Ritz getting his third brace in a row. So that's great. And Politowski also gained a brace in this match. Romario had a 7.7 .7 average rating. So. And Sunday felt like my decision to replace Novak with Romario might be a good call. So. Can we keep this up? We took on Kokovia next. And beat them 1 0. David Ritz getting his 7th goal of the season already. And once again, we're looking good. They had no shots on target in this match. So. We really couldn't be tested goalkeeper-wise, but at least we did ourselves justice and did good things. I'm happy with the win. We then took a rule shahoof and beat them by two goals to nil. They had one shot on target. It was easily dealt with. And Palatowski getting a brace here. Dedovitz failed to score in the game for the first time this year, but he got two assists instead. So clearly, we're looking much better this year than we have done in the past couple of years. I'm even giving some appearances to some youngsters of the team which I think is a good sign for the future here. And we finish things up with a 1-0 victory over Jack Leonia. Another debut was given, this time to Rafael Smalek. And the opening goal, and only goal, was scored by right back, who took a free kick to Matthias. Kasowalski looks really, really good in this game as a free kick taker. And perhaps that's his spot in the future, which is very nice indeed. As things stand, six games in, six games won. We are looking absolutely outstanding and nothing feels like it's going to stop us right now. The teams in the top seven are the teams I'd expect to be in the top seven at this point in time. With perhaps because Switzerland not doing as well as I thought they would. Same with Jacqueline and Kovitsia being in eighth is a good sign. Vizla Krakow potentially could be doing better. But if you look at Lech Parsons and Golit Zabdia Kokovia, and Swas Wokov and Lege Vosavel. I'm expecting them to all be up there. LK is lost by probably the team that's overperformed right now, but that's fine. We can work with that. We've got some really talented players, and I'm happy that they're doing well here. The fact we've got two players in the top three goal scores chart already is kind of saying a lot. Oh, also, on transfer deadline day, we had offers from both Leicester and Bournemouth of around 10.25 and 11.5 million pounds. For Matthias Cavalsi of all players, I didn't take him, but it's good to know that we have these offers on the table if we ever wanted to sell him. That being said, we had about an offer of £34.5 million for Dennis Naraki, which I think says a lot. It really, really does. That being said, though, we've had a Champions League draw, and we've had some reasonably difficult opponents, potentially. We get Celtic in the first game, Guillotine in the next game, Juventus in the third game, they're all at home. Then we go to Newcastle, then we host Real Sociedad, then we go to Sparta Prague, then we go to Firenze, and then we go to Real Batiste, the La Liga champions, which I think is doable. I honestly think we can win enough games to go through to the next round at least, and that's a promising sign. Whether or not we actually do, I don't know, but Juventus and Newcastle are definitely difficult games. Home or away, same Real Sociedad and Fiorentina, Sparta Prague and Firenze and Celtic, we should be winning, I think. Real Betis is probably the, the main challenge, given that they are the La Liga champions these days. And who knows, we might be struggling, but it's exciting either way. That being said, we're now going to try and find teams from our country in the other competitions. And there is one Polish team in the Theopa League, and that's Krakowia. They got knocked out of the Champions League. But they at least made themselves a nuisance. And I just realised the teams are in the Europa League with Chelsea, Real Madrid, Inter Milan, Manchester United, all in this competition along with Villarreal and Napoli. Napoli have been relegating the save, so they're not as powerful as they once were. But there are some fascinating teams that you'd think should not be in this league at all, but still are. As for the Europa Conference League, there was also one team in there, and that's Gravitzia. They were knocked out of the Europa League in the playoff round, so they got knocked out to this competition. But I'm hoping they can do good things. There are teams like Sevilla in this competition, which is a bit scary. Same with Crystal Palace, because they had their Tycoon takeover. Lemon Foot also had their Tycoon takeover as well. 
So there are some difficult teams in this competition that I'm not expecting them to do well against. I'm just hoping they get some easy ties, like the New Saints, for example. But I think they've got a good couple of teams they should be able to take on and win against. So I think they'll be good. That being said, Mr. Zinsia actually went through to the next round of the Europa Conference League in the second qualifying round. They won 4 0 overall, which is great. But unfortunately, good examples they were knocked out in the third qualifying round, having lost 4 2 overall to Budapest Honvid, which is not ideal to say the least. And Mr. Zinsia were also knocked out. They lost 4 2 overall in extra time to. Gostepe, which is not ideal to say the least. So he lost both Polish teams in the Europa Conference League that started the Europa Conference League in the third quarter round of the competition. Ben Vigo knocked up by Shadow Islanders competition as well. So clearly, this was a round of shocks for some people. As things stand though, we've only got 1.6 points so far going into this year, and I'm hoping we can do better. As things stand, because of the points that people are losing, Poland are going to be going up to eighth place right now, which is good. It's not ideal that we're literally hoping that other nations have bad years. Austria, who are losing a really good year, are only 0.3 points behind us. And same with Belgium being only 0.8 points behind us. So we're kind of hoping that we can keep having a good year and the other nations have a bad year. But we can't rely on that for long because of all the other nations going to be having good years eventually again. So we need to start putting our weight and quickly... Well, what I am going to do is end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys will like and share this video and that you subscribe to the channel. It really does help me a lot. But anyway, until next time, goodbye and well, good night.